six furlong handicap and uh, from what we've seen we've got again another quite open looking affair we've got uh, under curfew uh, who's been well supported he's uh, horse one got top weight of the field was then got voodoo ray uh, tillsworth on tight is a non-runner so then four is golden moon five is admirable lad we then have another non-runner, 7 is Q20 Boy, 8 is Delegate Lady, 9 is Eyes, 10 Tamani Hall, and then 11 Move On Up, and 12 Deep Spirit. So that is our runners and riders. We've got 10 going to post here for Division 2 of this Fireworks Spectacular Chancellor City Race Course Handicap. And this will be our final race tonight. So for the final time tonight, we can head over to Tomble at Chelmsford. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Looking at number 11 ahead of this final race, Division 2 of the Six Furlong Handicap, 0 to 52. And it's a horse called Move On Up. I don't know if it was named after the absolutely fantastic Curtis Mayfield song from back in the day, but um, nevertheless, looks pretty well, I would say. Needs to improve what he's shown so far, has to be said, at least recently. He's one of the likely pace angles, but definitely needs to keep going for a fair bit longer than he has been recently. Beaten 13 lengths in his most recent two outings so uh, a little bit more needed from move on up behind him is number nine that's eyes the mayor five-year-old last win for her came back in november 2021 but she has gone close since and finished third in classified grade less than three starts ago for last time running fine for fourth at newcastle in what was a similar race to this one off the same ho uh, mark here holds place claims but winning for her has become a bit of a problem behind her is number one that's under curfew First time cheek pieces here for this very consistent seven-year-old who arguably should have won at Bath two starts ago. Got stuck on the rail and then finished a valiant third at Wolverhampton last time when hitting the front late on. Just couldn't quite, uh, didn't really have the metal to see it through. Headgear could help in that regard. And he runs off the same mark here with the three pounds taken off by Molly Phillips. Surely very helpful indeed. Behind him, that is number, ooh, difficult to make out with a blanket on. I think it might be number eight. Uh, delegate the lady. Uh, we'll go with Delegate the Lady. I think it probably is that one. And um, a winner on soft ground at Yarmouth earlier this year. But since then, it's been a bit of a disappointment for her. As a result, Connections have opted to give her a wind up. Has won twice over course and distance, though, in the past. And it really remains to be seen how she fares now after that operation. But uh, she looks well enough. Yes, it is number eight. Good. Delegate the Lady. Uh, daughter of Delegator, of course. Behind her, in the four blazing white socks, is number five. Actually, he's just had a proper kick out of the rail, but it's OK. Uh, something about these railings tonight at Chelmsford certainly causing some issues. But um, number five, Admiral Ladd, on his toes a bit, has to be said. More missed than hit these days as well. But has form over course and distance. Is no doubt operating off a good mark now. Back to six furlongs from five. Will also suit... Enjoying himself tonight, isn't he, admirable lad? Behind him, number four, that's Golden Moon. Quite an interesting contender, this one. Definitely better form shown last time. In fact, it was probably a career best in fourth here over seven furlongs. And judged on that, where he only gave up the lead late on, this short trip should work very nicely indeed. I think he's interesting. Off a pound lower. Behind him is number seven, Q20 Boy. Only three from 47. And is pretty erratic in general. Not beaten far here in classified company back in August, as the bell goes. But two runs since in handicaps have been underwhelming. So he needs a fair bit more now. Behind him, that's number 12, Deep Spirit. A filly who won two starts ago, actually, but struggled again last time. And it's one of those that all of a sudden has something to prove again. I mean, in connection with the delighted that she won two starts ago, but then it all went wrong again. So... Yeah, difficult to, to get a handle on her, but she's not been well supported. So maybe you want to avoid again from the bottom of the weights is Deep Spirit. This is the final race on the card here at Chelmsford tonight. Looking forward to it. It's quite a difficult one to try and work out. But I'm a fan of Golden Moon as the big moon shines bright in the sky above me. Right, we're going to see jockeys get on board ahead of our final race tonight. And we can get a... a quick betting check as well and we have got under curfew as the 15 to 8 favorite from 5 to 1 voodoo ray golden moon is 5 to 1 15 to 2 for eyes delegate the ladies 9 to 1 10 to 1 for admirable lad q20 boy also 10 to 1 16 to 1 is deep spirit move on up is 28 to 1 and 40 to 1 for tammany hall we've got 10 runners here division two I suppose it's a question 
uh, weather under curfew, a bit like a couple of horses we've seen tonight, is going to be able to put it all together, is, has been running to a level to suggest that this rating of 54 should be make make him competitive. But now they put on the cheap pieces to add to add a little. I'm looking through this race. You know, there's not a he heap around, and I would imagine that if he can be in a strong position under Molly Phillips again, like we've seen tonight, just try and get the job done and uh, and give Tony Carroll a winner tonight. Yeah, he's he's the obvious horse, isn't he? Under curfew, he's mm. um, hasn't won for two years, but he's consistently placed. You look mm. at his form figures; he's never far away. Can these first-time cheap pieces be enough mm. to get him over the line and get his head in front? He's, he's handicapped to do that. He has ran with blinkers on in the past, and they didn't work, and they took them off. And but he has got form in the book to win a race like this. He's seven now. He's been running so mm. consistently well. He, he's going to get his head in front at, at some point, and this could well be his race. Um, he's, he's one of the more likely winners with a good draw from store one. Like you say, Molly Phillips on board. Mm. Um, she might just pop forward and get a good position. He's, for a seven-year-old, he looks full of enthusiasm, and he's been running that way as well, which counts for a lot at this level. Yeah, his, the way he runs suggests that, the way, and the way that the track is riding tonight suggests that he should be very... Uh, although that doesn't look great for Tom Queeley there, Voodoo Ray is proving oh, looks a, bit a jockey's nightmare. Oh. Yeah, he's very keen going to Bose Food Array. Fortunately, he's a front runner, so um, he won't have to do any of that in the race. But Tom... I don't know. If, I don't know if Tom's enjoying that or not. From his facial expressions, he looks <laughs> like he's finding it quite amusing. Well, I think he smiled because he knew he was pulling up. <laughs> I think the horse seeing the stalls and pulling. He didn't go very fast, did he? He just he, he just took him on a little bit, but um, Tom he's... just stood up and sat against him. He's actually coming in for a bit of support. He's quite an interesting one, Louis, because like, he's ran at Brighton more or less. Ever, forever. Um, but when you see his record on the all weather, not from three, but potentially they're sort of running out of options. But he is a horse that likes to get out and race prominently. I suppose not entirely certain what trip he wants, but uh, just might just concern you that this surface hasn't really been has played in his strengths in the past. No, I think coming down, maybe he's looking up to see if he can see any seagulls. But. Um... <laughs> No, he's a, he's a horse that, uh, like you said, Jess, his running style will suit this track. Obviously a free-going horse and one where you can probably keep the revs up on mm. him and, and keep him in a forward rhythm. So he is the horse for me that I think has got fresher legs, obviously a four-year-old and, and not had as many runs as um, under curfew, but a horse that probably needs to, I guess, step up a little bit again here tonight. It's, it's a trappy little race, and if I was going to look elsewhere, I'd probably look at something like Delegate the Lady, who's... Um, a mare that does spring up a surprise every now and then and, and probably looks like she's off a mark now where she could probably, I mean, do that or do that in the near future. So yeah. that would be a horse for me that I would be keeping an eye on tonight. She's back on, a, on her last winning mark of 48, so she's waited to be competitive. She's had wind surgery as well and hasn't been seen for some time with that wind surgery sort of in mind. But... I always think course and distance for Martin proves a lot of horses that sort of have shown that they're capable here. That's what would be my it's like negative against Voodoo Ray, but he does look like he's going to be keen to get on with things. Yeah, course form. Um, Louis right, delicate lady. She's won twice course and distance mm. and off this mark of 48. Uh, had the wind up because um, it was a poor run last time, but quite often you see horses running first time the wind up. Sometimes it takes a run for them to yeah. realise it's not too... Sometimes you catch them... Mm. The second time after a wind up. I'm not saying she can't win, but um, sometimes that's the case. Voodoo Ray, the obvi obvious chance, given um, he's pretty free and, and likes to race forward. And excuses last time. It didn't look like he <clears throat> handled the soft ground last time at Brighton, but um, I think I'm going to stick with under, under curfew. I think tonight could be his night with the cheap pieces on first time from a low draw. I know Tom made a case for Golden Moon. He ran over seven last time. Yeah, he's a horse that I think has just been a bit frustrating. 72,000 guineas he costs as a yearling. I don't yeah. think they thought he was going to be running in, uh, at this level. And he's been supported quietly in some of his races. I think I was at Chelmsford a couple of runs before the last one. And he just didn't really run much race at all. And they've, that was over a mile. So now back down to, to this trip of six. He's yeah. a bit of a puzzle. First run over six, but not very inspiring, I'm afraid, for me. I think the only problem in this race could probably be that 
there might be a few that want to go forward and they could mm. end up cutting each other's Burn throats. Up. So I think it could be a case where if someone does want to grab the... Gates back and away they go. Under Kerf, he wasn't particularly away well. Neither was Eyes as they make their way through the early stages of Division 2 of the fireworks spectacular at Chelmsford City. Handicap over the six furlongs. Good start from Voodoo Ray, who's keen to post and is pretty keen in the race as well. To delegate the lady, the black and yellow colours move on up the grey. Another one that's keen in the run. They're then followed by Deep Spirit in the light-coloured jacket. Then towards the outside, Golden Moon there for Callum Shepherd, who's three wide as they turn. Then under Kerf, Q20 boy towards the rear of the field. Admirable Lad is very wide as well then eyes and Tamani hauls towards the rear of the field too making their way towards the halfway point in the contest it's move on up who's just about the leader to the inside there of voodoo ray who's still prominent too for queely then up the inside under kerf who's made nice progress and molly phillips moves into third there then followed by deep spirit who's driven along golden moon is wide round the turn there followed by q20 boy delegate the lady and the rest down towards the business end furlong and a half to go move on up gets a reminder but battling hard is voodoo ray down the center of the track and it's voodoo ray to move on up these two have been prominent throughout q20 boys trying to get going not much from under curfew inside the final half though long now voodoo ray q20 boy is getting home really quickly q20 boy gets there tight for second between move on up and uh, voodoo ray fourth or some under curfew then delegate the lady oh a very smooth ride there from young alicia perkins aboard q20 boy who into the fourth time in a career that has been uh, Pretty erratic in general, but he's come home really strongly there under hands and heels to get home in front of Move On Up and Voodoo Ray. I think in that order it is quite tight for second, but a lovely performance from the winner and indeed from the rider as well. Really good effort there from Q20 Boy, who's been in the doldrums recently, but something has clearly clicked in recent times. And uh, claiming seven for Mark Usher, Alicia Perkins rides Q20 Boy to a 10 to 1 victory. And a horse who tends to disappoint, I would say, but clearly things in the race have worked out well for this one today. I think he's benefited from the strong pace that's been set by Move On Up, who, to his credit, has run much better than has been the case of late. Billy Lochnan almost getting that treble on the board, but was denied by Alicia Perkins, and it is her first winner on the board as well. So a red-letter day for her. What an effort from her in the saddle, that is. And uh, couldn't really have worked out better for her in the run. A nice strong pace to aim at. And congratulations to all concerned, but particular to Alicia Perkins. That was a lovely effort from her. And uh, I'm sure she'll be absolutely delighted winning the last race at Chelmsford tonight aboard a horse who can be notoriously difficult to win with. So I think extra kudos can be applied to Alicia Perkins there. Well done. And Q20 Boy wins the last here at Chelmsford. Yeah, this horse has um, given apprentices lots of opportunities and it's Alicia Perkins who's got him to win for the fourth time. He's coming out of stall four. I think it was Voodoo Ray who was as keen as he was down to the post, keen to get on with things, coming out of stall three. And maybe the keenness getting down to start just meant that he didn't have much left in the tank. But I think you were right, Louis, because there was a lot going up on out front. You could see Q20 Boy out the back just sort of allowed everything just to sort of far off in front of them and I think Alicia was right to just sort of hold her nerve. Yeah, delighted for Alicia. Obviously, as me and Martin know, it's not much feeling like riding your first winner. It kind of, you feel a bit all at sea and it's yeah. um, a lot to take in. So she'll be delighted and I thought it was a lovely ride from her. She kind of let the race unfold and, and like we did mention beforehand, it's okay being on the front end, but I just think Voodoo Ray was over racing mm -hmm. and, and not really in a nice rhythm so um, he done well to stay on and, and keep plugging on at the finish but I thought it was a lovely ride by this apprentice and um, Q20 boy actually won off a mark of 59 last year so back down to 48 tonight um, he yeah. was entitled to win it was a good opportunity yeah but as a as a, as a jockey going forward, watching this back, which I'm sure she will do for plenty of times, but and everything just kind of, all the, the, the tides kind of parted for her perfectly. You can see here, um, moving up, who got into a little bit of a battle with um, Voodoo Ray. They were going probably too fast, too early.